Welcome to your Friday weekly UAS news update. And this week, actually, I got some pretty important topics. The first one is the Yale drone delivery program that was announced a couple days ago. It was actually shut down by the FAA a few days later. I want to talk about Airspace Link. They're kind of a new name in the, um, in the UAS world, and they're not really doing something all that good. So we're going to talk about this. I want to talk about fighting the coronavirus using uh, drones. There's two companies that are going out there to help with that in China. And then the last thing I want to talk about is DJI's response to the uh, remote ID and PRM. And they published a video this week called Drone to Phone. So I want to talk about this technology and then kind of what it looks like. And the last thing is just some Pilot Institute news. So, all right, let's get started. First thing this week is Yale had started a drone delivery uh, program for their students to deliver some food. And uh, the app was called Kiki Air. You could basically go on the app and, and request something and then it would get delivered to you. Well, as it turns out, they uh, I think somebody published a press release this week and then the FAA found out that they were doing this and they were doing this somewhat illegally. So an FAA spokesman said that basically they were not uh, they didn't have the proper approval to do what they were doing. It looks like they were flying in zero grid airspace, which as you know, if you're a student of mine or if you've been around for a while, you need special approval to fly in that kind of airspace. Not only that, but you also need approval if you're doing delivery, you need a part 135 operation certificate, which are pretty difficult to get. You also need to have a, a waiver to fly over people, if that's what you're gonna be doing, and possibly a waiver to fly beyond line of sight. So it looks like they didn't have all their paperwork in order, so the FAA shut down the operation. So we'll see what happens next. Um, likely fines, that's probably usually what happens, or uh, so we'll see what the FA does with this one. The next thing I want to talk about is something that you should be paying attention because it's kind of hidden in there. And, uh, and this is the reason why I do this news update is because I want to keep you up to date on what is going on in the world of, of uh, unmanned aviation. Now, this company is called Airspace Link. And I started by reading this article that was about how this company wants to create highways in the sky over uh, Detroit over the area, the, the uh, metropolitan area of Detroit. And I said, well, you know, this is, this is kind of a good idea. And the more I read about it, and the more it's not such a good idea, the CEO of this company called Airspace Link, which is one of the new lens provider, is pretty open about what they want to do. And I'll give you a quote from what's in the article. We're building highways in the sky and toll roads for commercial and recreational drones. Now, toll roads, you know what this means. This means that this company is trying to pocket money for providing you airspace authorization to go fly in, in the airspace around Detroit and possibly around other places in the country. Now, another quote that came from this article that kind of raised my, uh, my little uh, spidey sense there, it said, it keeps the city safer as we can fly, as we can have no fly zone over schools or hospitals. Essentially what they're trying to do, and, and I've seen this company before in the news and it's, it's never good news, unfortunately, when this company is named, um, they want to create, they want to work with local governments to basically create space that would be uh, no-fly zones uh, based on government ordinances. And what they're doing is they're collecting your data to be using the data against you in the future. So if there's an area, for example, that has uh, too many flights, then they could basically create a no-fly zone similar to what DJI actually does with their um, their airspace restriction, their own restriction. and uh, But in this case, it would not be based on airport or safety. In this case, it would basically be because they don't want you flying in that area or because the city or whoever uh, provided money to this company doesn't want you flying. So this is a major, major, major red flag. Now, I know that there's still regulation that needs to be put in place if that were to happen, but still, this company is basically working by collecting your data and then providing it to other people so that you can stop flying. So think about that for a second. So uh, Airspace Link is, is one of the biggest threat I see right now in this industry to you having access to a free airspace. So please, 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 if you're a supporter of this company, please stop using them completely. They need to, uh, they just need to go by the wayside, quite frankly. Uh, it's very rare that I will put a company on the spotlight, but this is one of them that we really need to be paying attention to. So please pay attention. 
Next thing I want to talk about is uh, two companies. One is DJI, uh, as you may have seen in some news report. The other one is called JD, and they're using drones in China to basically drop disinfectant spray over uh, the cities that are most affected by the coronavirus. And I just thought this was kind of a, an interesting idea. They're basically using drones. These drones can carry about two gallons of disinfectant, and they have a radius of about three miles, five kilometers, and it can go and fly around and, and spray those cities to uh, prevent the virus from spreading or to just kill the virus basically so I thought this was an interesting idea I uh, thought I would mention it you can see some videos right here of how it works and just a cool use of the technology in a way the last topic I want to talk about today is kind of an important one as well uh, DJI released two articles I'll talk about the first one the first one is actually a video and the video was uh, highlighting the, the way that their, they call it drone to phone remote ID technology can work. Now this technology is nothing new. This technology actually has been around for several years. Uh, DJI has been in the forefront of remote ID in saying that this is how the, the technology should be developed and how it should be implemented. And what they did is they showed again what their idea of remote ID is, which is something that we were uh, in line with when we put our comment uh, our common guide out there, which is essentially saying that remote ID should be either a broadcast solution or not and or a network solution. And they've demonstrated this in Canada, I think it was in Montreal, where they're basically showing how the system works and how you can actually do everything that needs to be done for remote ID by simply using the broadcast functionality. This was one of the big solution that we had in our uh, in our common guide that basically said, hey, listen, if it broadcast is good enough for the FAA in most cases, then it should be good enough all the time. And we have the technology as it is. And this is what DJI is saying in this video is they're basically saying, hey, listen, we have the technology available. We wouldn't have to do anything other than a software update. And then we can make this happen tomorrow if we need to. And uh, I think, unfortunately, uh, there was a segment of the video that said that uh, this data was going to be available to the public. Now, if you've read the NPRM, you know that the FAA is trying to mandate that this information is available in the NP is available to the public, which is what DJI demonstrated in their video. So maybe this wasn't the best way to do it in the video, but the way that it was displayed in the video, basically everybody picked up on the fact that this data was going to be available to the public, which we know the FA is trying to push, and instead kind of missed the big picture of the video, which I think is too bad because there was a lot of good information in that video, other than the fact that this data will be available to the public, which we are all against. Now, DJI came up with a follow-up article where they explain that they are against having this information available to the public, that they agree with most people, the fact that, um, uh, that this will lead to confrontation, which is what we have in our article. As a matter of fact, DJI even mentions our uh, remote ID guide in their article saying that we have a list of all the things that have happened already on camera and how much worse it's going to get. So um, this may sound like I'm, I'm defending DJI. I'm not defending per se DJI. I just want to make sure that people understand what the video was about initially. I think the idea was to show that this can happen tomorrow without a, 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 an additional cost to you, the operator, and to me. And, uh, and that we can make this work without the, the complex and, and crazy uh, remote ID and PRM that uh, the proposal that the FAA has out there. So this is all I'm going to say about this. Please watch the, two, the, the video. I'm going to put some, uh, some footage right here. I'm going to put a link and then also read the, the follow-up article because I think um, something get lost in the message, unfortunately, and uh, we all need to be paying attention. There is a solution out there. It's already in existence. It's already in your drone and it's ready to go. And we don't need this crazy proposal from the FAA. Last thing is some Pilot Institute news. Um, first off, NPRM, let's talk about this because this is kind of present. There's 19,000 comments at the moment on the NPRM. We need more, more, more comment. If you haven't commented yet and you've been following for a while, please go to this link, read about the NPRM. Uh, we made it nice and simple for you and then submit your comment. If you think your comment doesn't make a difference, please submit a comment anyway, because we need to flood the FA with this so that they can see that we're paying attention, okay? I spent some time this week with Kenji Sugaharas. Kenji is an NPRM expert. He was actually sitting on some of the ARC panels out there for the remote ID. So 
part of the recommendations that he placed uh, that uh, went into the uh, the NPRM and were actually ignored by the FA. So I sat down for about an hour with Kenji. I created a podcast and you can listen to it. I'm going to put a link down here. Uh, so I think the, the conversation went really well. Kenji is a really smart guy and very, um, very well spoken. So you can actually hear what he talks about, his experience with the ARC and then what he thinks um, this, uh, this, the response should be to this NPRM. So um, another thing too with Pilot Institute, we created a new channel, a Pilot Institute Airplanes. Now this channel is primarily, uh, the one that you're on right now, is primarily focused towards drone. We also do airplane training, so we are creating a channel just for airplanes as well. If you're interested in airplanes or think that you may be interested in airplanes, I'll put a link as well. Please go ahead and follow. I'm going to have also a news update over there for manned aviation, just not unmanned aviation. and. Um, We'll just have more information. And with this, we actually created uh, a free guide for people that want to become pilots, airplane pilots, and uh, kind of explains the entire flow of, uh, of how you get your license, some common questions that we get all the time. Uh, we have a private pilot course out there available, uh, a ground school, just like a part 107 ground school, and uh, it's pretty successful. So if you are interested in becoming a pilot, it's 35 hours, okay, which is a lot of content, a lot of knowledge. Uh, even if you're not interested in becoming a pilot, but you're a drone pilot and you want to know more about the main aviation side, then this is a, a good place to be. So that's it. I'll stop talking. I hope you have a great weekend. Please leave a comment, like the video follow us if you haven't already we put videos every week and um, this is it have a great weekend happy flying